Hi guys, welcome back. We are going to be doing a lesson today about um, poetry and prose. So really kind of exploring the differences between poetry and prose, and then looking at how uh, keywords and phrases are really what, um, what we need to be focusing in on to be able to understand the deeper meanings of poetry and prose. So we'll start by talking about uh, just kind of the defining characteristics of poetry and prose before we get into that keywords and phrases stuff and hopefully it will all come together for you. So let's start by just looking at what are the basic differences, differences between poetry and prose. We'll actually start with prose, not poetry, uh, since that's probably the one that most people are um, unfamiliar with. And a lot of times prose is actually what comes before poetry. So a poet will write something in prose and then turn that prose into poetry. So what is prose then? Prose is a block of text written in sentences and paragraphs. So essentially, it's almost anything that's written in sentences and paragraphs, although a lot of times we'll talk of more artistic types of writing as prose rather than, you know, your standard paragraph in an English class where you're where you have, you know, a thesis and evidence and elaboration and a conclusion. Although I guess technically that could be prose. We don't generally consider that prose. We, we consider something a little bit more artistic to be prose. So something like this, which is an excerpt from House on Mango Street, uh, the second vignette about hairs. It says, but my mother's hair, my mother's hair, like little rosettes, like little candy circles, all curly and pretty because she pinned it in pin curls all day, sweet, uh, sweet to your nose into when she is holding you. Hold, um, sorry, sweet to your, Sweet to put your nose into when she's holding you. Holding you and you feel safe. The warm smell of bread before you bake it is the smell when she makes room for you on the side of the bed, still warm with her skin. You sleep near her. The rain outside falling and Papa snoring, snoring the rain, and Mama's hair that smells like bread. I apologize for stumbling there in the middle. But you can see that, you know, this is a piece of prose it's it's a block of text it uses sentences it's not multiple paragraphs in this case but it does use sentences but it's a fairly artistic representation of the english language it's you know it's not completely straightforward so it has some more i guess poetic qualities to it but we would still call it prose because it's just that block of text now the what what poetry is, is it's text with fewer words, and normally it's unevenly spaced and written in lines and stanzas. <clears throat> so, you know, a poem that's similar to what's over to the left may actually look like something like this. Hair, my mother's hair, little rosettes, circles, curly, pretty, Pinned all day, sweet when she's holding you, holding you safe. The warm smell of bread, the smell when she makes room for you on her side of the bed. Warm with her skin, you sleep near her, rain falling, papa snoring. So at their core, they're, they're you know, kind of the same. They explore the same ideas and, and have the same images, but you know, the, the way that they're organized, the way that they're presented, and certainly the number of words are quite different uh, between prose and poetry. Poetry is much more abstract. Now, the poem on the right is actually something that I created from the prose on the left, because like I said, prose is often uh, the first step to writing a poem. So a lot of times what you can do is you can take a piece of prose and you can kind of find 
the parts of that piece of prose that are really the 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 you know poetic parts you you could find the words and phrases in other words and you can um you can uh, turn that prose into poetry and this is how i did that so what i did was i went through the prose and i just crossed out all of the words that i personally thought were extra uh they're extraneous they they you know they they turn it into complete sentences or or you know phrase complete phrasing and thoughts um and really just kind of bears in on the 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 minimal number of words and phrases that are needed in order to get the the key um the key kind of sensations across here so i ended up with just you know words and and um and phrases to to then turn into the poem and then i was able to make decisions about where to cut lines and and how to organize the words and um and the phrases to make to make the poem itself so now that we've talked about the you know the the kind of what technically makes the difference between prose and poetry let's talk a little bit about what analytically makes the difference between prose and poetry so what what poetry is going to do that prose does not is it's going to intensify the images that come up in the prose so it's not that you know like on the left the prose doesn't have the images of the hair and the rosettes and the circles and the curliness and the you know the the imagery of you know the smell of bread and the you know the the warm skin and those kinds of things but the the poetry is going to intensify those images through its use use of keywords and and phrases it's also going to poetry is going to intensify the emotions of the prose because you're really keying in on those emotional words and phrases, the ones that are going to bring up specific feelings uh, in the audience. <clears throat> and then third, um, poetry is much more focused on uh, the experience of what of what it is, like the topic that you're writing about, rather than getting all the details and and being really specific about the details poetry is like i was saying earlier much more abstract and it's more just about creating that kind of emotional imagistic experience uh for the reader rather than a whole you know kind of story with a flow to it or anything like that so once i have taken the prose and really identified the key words and phrases and, and turned those key words and phrases into a poem, I can start to talk about um, the meaning of the poem a little bit more, which is going to be something that you're going to need to be able to do is focus in on the meaning of poetry by identifying keywords and details eventually, uh, or keywords and phrases, excuse me. So. I've also added this little couple, these couple of sentences of, of analysis. So I, and just to explain, you know, how I was able to um, choose those words and phrases. So I said the words and phrases that I picked out really emphasize the image of the mother's hair and its distinct smell. I also chose words and phrases meant to create the tender emotion of protection and security that comes with a loving mother who keeps you safe through the storms of life. So there I'm really exploring what is, the, you know, what's the underlying meaning here. So by identifying the words and phrases and turning them into a poem, not only am I able to, you know, kind of bring out those images and bring out those emotions, but I'm also able to start identifying the you know the 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 meaning of this poem the you know the you know the the theme of safety and comfort and and you know how mothers bring that about and things like that so it's you know much more um it's much more focused on just the experience that experience so 
you are going to be doing this with a different piece of prose, um, you will find that you've been provided with, with a piece of prose uh, from which you will need to create your own found poem like I did in uh, on the previous slide. So it's called found poetry because you're finding the poem within the prose. You're really going in and looking for those um, key phrases and, um, and words, and then organizing them as your poem that does what, what I was just talking about. So you'll do that, and then I would like you to be prepared to share that work with the class.